Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you a very cool new feature that Anthropic introduced, prompt caching with Claude. Today I'm going to show you what this is all about and also a topic that I've read several times. Do you still need drag when you have got prompt caching? So first, what is prompt caching and how does it work? Prompt caching is an extension of how LLMs generate text. So normally LLMs generate text token by token and each step uses the previous output as context. So the process involves calculating an attention state, which determines the importance of each token in generating the next one. However, recalculating the attention for every new token can be computationally expensive. To address this, a so-called key value cache stores the attention states after they've been computed and they don't have to be recalculated with each new token. This speeds up the generation process significantly. So while the key value cache helps within a single prompt, the prompt cache takes this further by allowing the reuse of attention states across different prompts. This is especially useful when prompts have overlapping segments like standard system messages or commonly used templates. So by pre-computing and storing these segments, prompt cache reduces the need for repeated calculations, making the process of generating text even faster and more efficient. So Entropic states that you can reduce the costs up to 90% and the latency up to 85% for long prompts. Prompt caching is available currently for Claude 3.5 Sonnet and Claude 3 Haiku. So prompt caching can be effective in situations where you've got a large amount of documents or context once, and then you refer to that information in subsequent requests. So it's very good for conversational agents with a history, so you don't have to send the system instruction and the documents from the retriever or the vector store multiple times to the LLM, you can just cache that. It's also very good for coding assistance, large document processing, detailed instruction sets. So that means if you've got a lot of examples in your prompt, then you can just cache these examples and you don't have to send it to the LLM again and again. Another common topic is also when you talk to books, papers and documentation, where you need the complete knowledge base, so the complete book into the prompt and you don't have to resend that again and again. So here is a use case example. So if you want to chat with a book that has got a prompt with 100K tokens, the first time you send that to the LLM, there is nothing stored in the cache yet. So this takes 11.5 seconds. And the second time when the 100K tokens are cached, then the latency decreases from 11.5 to only 2.4 seconds. So for many short prompting with 10k tokens, it goes from 1.6 seconds to 1.1 seconds, so 31% um, decrease. So cost reduction is also quite significant with 90% and 86%. So here is a little bit more detailed example. So for Claude 3.5 Sonnet, this is the most intelligent up-to-date model that has a 200k context window. The input costs is $3 from 1 million tokens if you don't use prompt caching, but if you do, the first time when you write the cache, it's $3.75 for 1 million tokens. But when you use the cache, then it's only 30 cents for 1 million tokens. The price for the output stays exactly the same. To use it in the code, you have to do the following. So you first have to install and import the Entropic library, then load your API key for Entropic, and then create an uh, Entropic client. This Entropic client allows you to talk to the Entropic API. And then the next step is that we download a large book. This is the Frankenstein book from Gutenberg.org. And we try to download that. We first make a GET request to see if it's actually available. And then if it's available, we use beautiful soup to scrape that content. We strip the text, use some regular expressions to delete some content we don't want to use. And then we are gonna set up a timer. So we want to see how long it takes when we don't have it in the cache. And then a second time when we've got the book content in the cache. Then we create our client. We use Claude 3, uh, 3 Haiku. The next part is that we set up a system message to give the LLM some kind of identity. And also in that system message, we have to provide the book content. And now comes the important part we have to set this cache control key. And this means that the information in this dictionary, so the book content will be stored in the cache if there is nothing in the cache yet. And it will be used from the cache if we already stored it in the cache. So this is the important new part here. 
And then we just pass another message, so with role user, and we want as user to analyze the major themes in Frankenstein. And then we use another perf counter from time to measure the execution time. And that's actually it. So let's try it out. So first time we run it, just run Python raw code.py. So that's the response. If we scroll up a little bit, we can see this is the execution time. We've got 12.8 seconds for the first time. And if we have a look at the response, we can see the following prompt caching better usage. And here we can see cache creation input. So we set 90k tokens in the cache and we've got zero tokens which were read from the cache because we of course don't have anything in the cache yet. So this is zero tokens. But if we execute that again, we should see that the information that book is already in the cache. So we should just read it. So let's try to execute it again. And normally this should be now significantly faster. And instead of writing it in the cache, we should read it from the cache. So let's try it out again. And this is the result. It's 6.1 seconds. So 50% decrease in execution time. And if we scroll down, we can see that cache creation input is zero tokens. And now we've got 90k tokens in this attribute cache read input token. So we read it from the cache. And this is why this is significantly faster now. Since many of you use Langchain, you might wonder if this works with Langchain too. And yes, it of course does. You just have to use the chat entropy class from Langchain Entropic and then use the normal invoke method or use a invoke batch or whatever you want. This totally works fine. Okay, so you might wonder what is the cache lifetime? Is it stored forever in the model? So no, the cache lifetime is around five minutes and then the lifetime is refreshed each time the cache content is used. If it's not used for more than five minutes, then the cache gets cleared. Another question might be, how many documents can you store in the cache? Can you use the cache multiple times in a prompt or not? And the answer is yes, you can use this cache control attribute four times in a single prompt. Okay, so now the last and very important question, can prompt caching replace reg? And the answer is a clear no. So in fact, prompt caching and reg complement each other quite well. In an LLM based application that uses reg, prompt caching can be particularly useful when users ask the same questions or similar questions very often. In such cases, then the retrieved documents can be stored in a cache which can significantly improve the efficiency of your system. However, when new or less frequent questions arises, then you just use the normal reg system where you pass the question to the vector store and dynamically retrieve the information from the vector store. So I don't have too much experience with that in practice, of course, because it's new, but I would say if a question was asked within the last five minutes, then you can just use the cache and otherwise you use the vector database. But I think as we gain more experience and refine that approach, we'll get better insights how to make the most of that combination, reg and prompt caching. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.